So uh, for those of you in uh, 209S who didn't come the first day, I would like to introduce myself as the professor in your class. I'm Gloria Mark. If you have any questions, please uh, send me email. Uh, I'm pleased to present our speaker for today. It's Alf Inge Wang. Did I say it right? Very good. Okay, that's the Norwegian pronunciation. Um, Alf is a professor at the University of Science and Technology in Trondheim, Norway. And I told Alf I've actually been to Trondheim two times. So I, I actually know it. Uh, he received his master's degree, his PhD degree, also at uh, the same university. And in 2007, he established Join Game, which is Norway's largest professional network for game developers and researchers. In 2012, he began a startup company called Mobitrol, which is based on Kahoot, which he'll talk about today. Uh, he's published in a whole wide range of areas. I, I can't even begin to describe the diversity, but we can narrow it down to saying software engineering, software architecture, mobile computing, CSEW, game technology, and game-based learning, and it's the latter game-based learning that's the topic of his current research. So, thank you. And thank he's you. on sabbatical this year at UCI. Uh, Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so when I do uh, classes, I, I really love interaction. That's actually one of the motivations for creating this uh, game-based uh, educational learn or learning tool that I will present today. So if you have questions, you don't have to wait until the end of the talk. Just, you know, fire. Um, yes, the title of my talk, mm -hmm, interesting. Okay. It's the use of game-based learning in the classroom. So I will talk about something that started around 2006, um, a project, uh, like a master's project we started with some ideas, and then it has developed to hopefully soon a commercial uh, product that you will see today. Um, this doesn't work. Okay. So, my plan is first I will give some examples from game-based learning. I'll just show you some of the prototypes. Most of the, kind of uh, the experiments and the prototypes we developed have just been scrapped. We have produced some papers, but we haven't used them, of course, in any classes due to some, uh, yeah, they didn't work that well. But I will give some examples. and then. I will focus on game-based learning in the classroom. So how can you, we use games to improve learning in the classroom? Um, I will show you how this tool, which is called, or it's called Kahoot, how it works. Um, I will also give you some real results from some experiments that we did with this tool. And then hopefully you can all join me playing this game. So you can see how it works. Uh, and then we'll just summarize the talk. So if you have any questions during the talk, please don't hesitate to ask. So for me, um, I have looked at three areas of using games uh, for education. First of all, one way you can use it is just to, <coughs> instead of doing paper exercises, you can make the students uh, play a game. Of course, there need to be some uh, learning objectives and it must be aligned with the course, but that's one of the things that we have been looking at. Another interesting way of using games is actually to make the students develop games as a part of their, for instance, a software engineering class. Uh, so the goal of the course is to learn something else than game development, but you use game development as a part of, of learning something else. That's the second thing. And the third um, kind of main approach that we have looked at is to use games in the classroom. And I'll focus on the latter. Yes. Um, I'm used to teach 
quite large classes or everything from maybe 30 to five, 600 students. Uh, mm -hmm. And I usually teach from eight to 10, that's called uh, night lectures in Norway. And then I usually have to do stuff to, you know, to make sure that they don't fall asleep. So sometimes I throw candy at them or sometimes I use some yeah, different noises and stuff, but we'll see if you survive this lecture. This is late lecture, lecture. maybe it's on Friday, it's probably as bad as uh, night lecture. Mm -hmm. Okay, some examples first. This is some, some of the prototypes. I think we have implemented probably maybe 20 prototypes. Most of them are really bad, <laughs> useless. Uh, not useless in the sense that we got results from doing, you know, we, we did some experiments, we learned something, but useless in the sense that we couldn't take it further to something more useful. Uh, so the first type of games or um, uh, projects that I will present is games that we use instead of exercises. The first one was called World of Wisdom. Uh, that's very uh, similar to a game which is produced here in Irvine, I think. <laughs> World of Warcraft. <laughs> and we got some inspiration from the same game. Uh, this was uh, when World of Warcraft was kind of on, on the top. Uh, so what we wanted to do was basically to create a, um, a <coughs> multiplayer game, a role-playing game, where students could um, play, uh, instead of battling through normal battles, it was actually quiz-based. So in order to beat or to, uh, to harm another student, you had to win in a knowledge war or knowledge battle. <laughs> But you could also challenge monsters, knowledge monsters, in order to get more um, or level up. But as you can see from the graphics, it was not that impressive. Um, the major problem, I think, with this game, uh, World of Warcraft is one of the most expensive type of games to, to develop. And the, the kind of games that we can produce in a search setting is pretty far away from the game that we're kind of targeting. So I think the students looked at this is not good enough. And also another problem, we wanted the, the teachers to create kind of different parts of the roles where the students can interact. And this was also hard. Uh, even though the user interface was fairly easy, it was hard to kind of get both students and teachers to interact. So we kind of scrapped that one. We wrote at least one thing <coughs> on the experiences. And then another game that we created was Knowledge War. This was basic, the idea was that students could just walk around with this game, this is running on, <coughs> on smartphones, and if two students are running the same, or in the kind of close to each other, then they would challenge uh, each other in a knowledge battle, basically a quiz war. Because we thought that maybe if we could have this um, like leisure time game, that they could also do some school work or uh, during lecture time. Um, it worked quite well for, uh, yeah, it has a, has a quiz challenge, but then we found that the students didn't like to do this kind of stuff during the lecture time. <laughs> so it was not that useful after all. Um, another example which is a bit interesting. We made a game which was called Amazing City Game, which was based on Amazing Race. Um, television show. So basically we wanted to, to students to learn uh, a city, in, in this case it was Trondheim where the university is, to learn the city through playing a pervasive game. So basically on your cell phone um, you got things that you had to do, you had to move to specific locations, you had to find maybe some uh, tags, you had to take some pictures, you had to uh, find what is this sound and stuff like that to, to solve some uh, riddles in order to get at the end of the race. And the goal was to get, get there first, so it was time-based. You could also get help, and then you got penalty time if you, want, if you use the help button. Um, this worked quite well for learning about the city and the history of the city, 
the major problem was it was hard to teach other things than a city because it's it's obviously tightly coupled to the locations and kind of the environment around um, where you play the, the game. Just one more example. Just uh, Knowledge War RPG. This was a more advanced version of the, uh, the Knowledge War game where we added um, characters. You could choose between, I think, around um, 50 diff different geek characters. Uh, the weapons you could uh, choose between were like uh, pens, pencils, uh, umbrellas, <laughs> stuff like that. And had different uh, um, um, different <coughs> ways you can protect yourself through uh, raincoats and stuff like that. So it, it was a humorous game, but the core of the game gameplay was actually knowledge war through quiz battles as well. But it was a bit more strategic. You could choose between different attack modes. Uh, there was leveling out, so you get more powerful. And the core of the gameplay was basically you, you could walk around the campus, uh, and you could just see on your GPS view of this game, you could just see a circle about maybe 100 meters around you, where you could discover like uh, treasures or other players. Uh, and if you saw another player, you could pick up treasure. Uh, if you saw other players, you could challenge the other players. So it's kind of exploratory, both uh, exploratory, pick up treasures, but also level up and meet other players. And the goal was to be kind of the strongest or the guy with the most uh, points or that leveled up all the way. Um, and it was well perceived by the students. Uh, it was a bit of hassle to get a positioning. Uh, we used an indoor positioning system um, that we have at our campus and GPS outside. But at least the transition, if you want to go from one building to another building, also at different levels in the building, the delay was a major issue. So the, that was one of the difficulties uh, with this, this type of game. Okay, any questions so far, comments? All right. Um, so this was basically games that you could use to, instead of um, exercises, but we also used game development to learn other skills. So in my software architecture course, uh, that's a course we teach for, uh, it's the, uh, the third grade or the third year at the university or the fifth grade, we have, uh, fourth grade, we have a slightly different system. So um, in this course, I made it possible to choose between, oh, okay, I have to say one thing first. In this software architecture <coughs> course, it's slightly different from the way I know other universities teach software architecture. Because we, in addition to teach how to design the architecture and the architecture process and all that stuff, the students also had to or have to implement their architecture. And then they have to evaluate how close the architecture is to the, <laughs> yes, to the implementation. And the reason I changed this course to do the, or made the students do it was to feel the pain of their architecture. Because uh, some students, they made this really advanced, detailed architecture with a lot of you know, funny stuff. And then, which it looked really impressive on paper, but then they had to implement this. And then I had to change it because it was impossible to implement. Uh, so in this course, um, the students could choose between uh, develop a game or just an application. Uh, and we had an experiment where we monitored the different groups and we compared how the different groups were um, performing based on what they chose. So what we found from this, I've written a paper about this, is that the students that chose game development, they produced soft architecture with higher, higher complexity. I think the reason they were more engaged in their product, so they were doing more stuff basically. Uh, they also put more effort, they worked harder, uh, more hours, and they got uh, a higher grade on the project compared to the non-game uh, groups. However, 
they did not get a higher grade on the final written examination. So it's a problem, I think, in between the transferring the practical uh, uh, practical skills to the written examination. So I hope that actually it will produce higher final examination scores, but that was not the case. So that was basically the two other topics or the way we have used game um, game based learning and now I will talk about game based learning in the classroom um, actually I had a dream from I was I don't know 12 13 years uh, to I always loved games I always loved game shows and also I've been really motivated or I been really f really fond of learning or teaching. So I've kind of been dreaming about making something that made it possible to combine these three things. So my idea of, of why should we use games in the lecture halls? I don't know if this is kind of a picture you can see here beside. I know at my university, my, uh, some of the lectures, for instance, in the morning or other lectures, this is kind of the sometimes <laughs> outlooks. So what we want to do is to transform students that are not engaged in what's happening in the lecture to make them listen and engage in, in the lecture. Um, also, we want to transform passive students or students doing something else. Uh, I don't know how focused you are, but my students, they you know, they, well, they check their Facebook, they email, Twitter, look at YouTube, well, lots of other stuff. Watch soccer <laughs> during lectures. So what I really want is to, for the students to be active in their own learning. Really engage in what is going on in the lecture. Because else is just a waste of time, both for the teacher and for the students. And another problem, like this lecture so far, it just, just have been one-way communication. It's pretty boring. Uh, you cannot participate. And I know it's getting more and more important, I think, for students to be able to kind of interact. You're used to giving likes or to giving feedback on what's happening uh, in a lot of different situations. So the one-way communication lectures are not maybe the best way of doing it. So if it's possible to make it a more two-way interactive lectures, I think that would really benefit both the teacher and the students. Um, another problem, I teach classes uh, up to four, 500 students. And these, <coughs> in these classes, it's <coughs> impossible to know if the students actually un understand what I have been teaching them. Do they understand? How much do they understand? Are there things that I should maybe explain better, and so on. So it's really nice if you can get some feedback. And also, for the students, it's important that to know, have they understood what um, the teacher had said? Is my understanding correct? To kind of get a, a confirmation if the, what you have learned is correct. So what we will end up, what the ultimate result would be to have more positive attitude towards learning. That's kind of the goal of the game-based learning. To make learning more engaging, more fun, and uh, have a better outcome, ba basically, from going to lectures and remember more and uh, learn more. And game-based learning will not solve these problems uh, alone, I think. It's just one of the things that you can use, tools that you can use in the toolbox. Uh, I think maybe one of the most important things you can do is to have variation in, the, in your teaching. That's one of the most important things. So, yeah. And I should probably have made more variation so far, but uh, okay. So, how can you use games in the classroom? Um, this may be more why. It's a tool uh, that can you can do some variation in the teaching. Break up long one-way communication. Another th thing you can use it for is to socialize 
the classroom. I don't know how you guys are, but at least my software architecture class, uh, it's, they're a bit nerdy, I have to admit. <laughs> it's much better to be quiet and do some programming, not speak at all. I try to force them to speak, but it's hard. Um, another thing, it's nice if you could have something that you can highlight the most important kind of issues or key points in your lecture. And if you have a, um, something, some, uh, some ways to remember these um, key points better than just PowerPoint or Blackboard or other things. Also, it's nice if you can do some tests on how much do the students know before you start to teach and how much do they remember after you're finished. Then you can see how effective your teaching has been. You can also run questionnaires if that's uh, something you want to do. And for the teacher, it's really nice. If you have a tool where you can get some feedback from the students, you can actually use it to improve your teaching. You can see, OK, this way of teaching, it doesn't really work. They don't remember anything from this, this part of your teaching. You can spark discussions. And then you can also, if you have an interactive tool, tool you can also get input of what needs more teaching time maybe some parts that doesn't need any more teaching time. So now I'm getting close to the key pointer. Okay, <coughs> so what is Kahoot and how does it work? So Kahoot is basically a bring your own device, that's the Bjod uh, game show in the classroom. It's basically a game show. So the teacher will be a, a game show host. Uh, and you can see all the questions on the large screen with, with the different alternatives. And then the students will use their own digital devices to give answers. And then you get more um, points if you answer uh, fast and correct and so on. And you get high scores. So it's, it's a game show experience. That's the whole idea behind Kahoot. Uh, and we want to we wanted to make this inclusive, so everything runs. It's web-based, HTML5, so it can run on any device. It's really easy to use, both to create uh, the quizzes and also to run it. Um, and it should run on most digital devices. Um, yes. I, I will just show you, give you a brief demo of how we can create a quiz now. Yeah? This is always a bit, it's pretty stable, uh, the platform. Uh, I just go to kahoot.it. It's not in Italy, but it's just a term. Uh, kahoot.it. This is what it looks like, the platform. Um, so if I want to create a new quiz, it's not really difficult. You can choose between quiz or discussion or surveys. Just make a quiz. The most difficult part, it's not to do the, the technical thing, it's to make the good questions and find the good uh, answers. That's the really challenge. Okay, so what should I call this? this is the ultimate, ultimate UCI quiz. Okay, go. So, uh, it's pretty easy. First, you can just write a question, for instance, what does the fox say? <laughs> and then you can choose how much time should they, you know, the students get to answer this. Okay, 20 seconds. You can also choose if this is a question you should get points or not. Because you can also have some no point questions. And then the answers. Okay, it could be ring, ding, ding, <laughs> or one. Or maybe Yof Chof. This is Norwegian stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you can choose which alternatives are the correct one. In this case, it's actually all of them. 
Uh, and you can also have fewer alternatives if you want. You can also add an illustration. Let's just get an illustration here. Let's see, sabbatical, work, presentation, UCI, stuff. Okay. Fox, yeah. So choose this illustration. Okay, there we go. I can add one more question. Uh, so, for instance, who is this? Then I can use the picture. Let's uh, have a picture here. Maybe you can recognize him. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, is this Bill Colin? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Is it Hannah? Fontana, maybe. Mm. Uh -huh. Or maybe Richard. Oops. Terrible. Yeah. Then, amount of time. And then, of course, the, you have to identify the correct one. This is pretty easy. Then, you're fi when you're finished with all the questions. You can also reorganize the questions. You get an overview of all the different questions. Uh, yeah, it looks fine. This kind of drag and drop, you can move them around. Okay. Then settings. You also have to identify some meta information. So this quiz is in English. You can choose if this should be a private. Then all the users of the system will be able to access it. And primary audience, this is obviously a university quiz, so difficult questions here. Okay, so that's it. Um, and you can also add a description, say something about the difficulty level, and also add tags to make it easier to identify this quiz. Okay, I'll just go for the last thing you can do. You can also add your, your um, a picture that identify this quiz. So I have downloaded a UCI picture, which would be a perfect match here. It just shows a picture of UCI. That's kind of the picture for this quiz. So now I'm done. Okay. Maybe we can, we can just uh, play this quiz now, and then we'll do a proper quiz after. So if I want to play this, I just Click on play now. And you also have some, you can choose between some options here, but I will just launch the game. So to be able to play, now we can hear the fantastic lobby music here. Um, so to be able to play this game, you just grab your digital device, opening, open a web browser to the URL kahoot.it. You should do it right now. Then you can enter the game pin. So when you have, and you should also enter a nickname. So now we can see that users are getting logged into the system. Actually, a really fun part uh, in my classes, uh, some students, they synchronize entering their names, so they write sentences, bang, 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 <laughs> which is quite fun. There's also a profanity filter, so you cannot just enter what you like. If you enter something that shouldn't be there, you will get just a random name. The system will give you one. Hmm? The game pin is 240, and it's all here. If you can, uh, yeah. can't see that far. Oh yeah. <laughs> then it maybe will be difficult to. So we have played this game with uh, up to 500 uh, students at the same time, which is fun. Okay, I think we'll just start there. I will, I will run another quiz, because this is the quiz you made. Okay. And this is actually one really important part about this environment. It should be fun. 
So smiling, laughing is actually a one effect we want to get. Okay, we just play this quiz. And if you didn't have enough time to join this time, the next we'll play one more quiz, which is not the easy one. Okay. The ultimate UCI quiz. All right. What does the fox say? So first you have to read the different alternatives and then you have to push the correct answer, okay? Now we can see the distribution of the answers. In this case, all the answers were correct. So you should have got some points right now. Okay, let's see. Kraver, yeah, it's Kraver, Kraver, I don't know. It's in the lead. Um, yeah, okay, next one. This is the more difficult question. Who is this? The final question. Okay, maybe Hannah Montana, Joe Clinton, Andre or Richard. Yeah, that's it. <gasps> what? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think you will get kicked out, right? Yeah. This universe is not for you. Okay. Let's see who won this quiz. Okay, this is this was not a real quiz. So I will just um, go through some other stuff and then we'll play the real quiz, okay? Yeah. Now you know how it works. Okay. So quick question. Yeah. How does this account? The ranking algorithm, algorithm how does it count for a network lag? For because you seem to get points if you answer quicker than other people. Yeah. How does it account for lag in the network? So, for example, everybody gets their question first. Like, it's nice to be getting. A yeah. Lag. Uh, yeah. Right now, uh, the <laughs> lag. Yeah. I, it's it's a problem if there is a major lag. Uh, basically, if everyone is using the same uh, Wi-Fi and is fast enough, it, this is not a problem. For instance, if some of you use. 3G, yeah, you will have a disadvantage. That's the way it is. I see. Uh, so could you maybe include like ping in the algorithm to decide? That will take so much data and so much time. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we want to make this really easy to set up, easy right. to run. So usually if you have a good enough environment set up, it's not a problem. Not yeah, but, but we know, for instance, right. it's better if all of the players use 3G, then it's, yeah. But maybe if you have different, uh, use different uh, telecom networks, it will also be different. Right. So the lag is, but you can also make the questions longer than the lag will, uh, or no, it <laughs> doesn't really happen. Yeah, but there is a latency before actually you're allowed to, to give your answer. So it should be. Oh, so that's how you Yeah, that okay. should be fair. Okay, I will just uh, give you some of the results from, um, what we've been seeing using this platform. I think when you use this platform for the first time, or game-based learning, uh, it's obviously this is fun, this is new, this is something that you haven't tried before. But what if you use it through a whole semester, every, every lecture? Because then you would expect that we are getting tired of all these quizzes, it's, it's the same all over again. So in this experiment, I just looked at uh, compared a one-time event that was the first time I introduced the Kahoot uh, in a motivation lecture versus using it through my software architecture course in every lecture. So I think I pushed it uh, some lectures. I even played it twice or three times during a lecture. So I wanted to see what are the wear of effects if you use it too much. Um, first of all, is it easy to control using a mobile device? Uh, for the one-timer, yes, no problem. Basically the same for the students that use it through the whole semester. The pink, the disagreeing students, they were, I know there were some students with Windows uh, phone at that time. It didn't work with Windows phone, so these are those guys. That's the explanation of that difference. Uh, then we asked if Kahoot worked well 
for advertising this lecture? Is it something that make other students come to the lecture and stuff like that? So about two thirds of the students for a one time event thought this was a good way of adver advertising lecture, but also close to 60% for students that used it through the whole semester, which I think, even though it's a smaller number, is pretty good. It didn't have that wear out effect that I anticipated. Another thing that I looked at, <laughs> if they were emotionally involved while playing, this means that did they get angry? Did they, you know, uh, did they uh, get happy? Yeah, w while playing. One time, 51% was emotionally involved in some way. And actually, about the same number through the semester. So did this thing didn't actually change over time. Interesting. Then, I'm more positive to the topic, to the soft architecture after playing Kahoot. For one time, 65%. And for students that did this <coughs> through the whole semester, um, yeah, 56, so about half of the students are more positive after playing. Um, yeah, it was slightly less, but still okay. Another thing, I communicated with other, others while playing. We want this experiment, uh, experience to be social, so that you can have chit chat while playing is a good thing <coughs> if you focus on the, the subject and, uh, you know, yeah. One time event, 67%, and for one semester, um, 52%. So there was a decreasing amount of how, many, how much they communicated uh, when they played this during the semester. Another question, I wish Kahoot would be used in other courses. For the one time event, 85%, very high. And actually, almost the same, the students that used this in my class, they also wanted to use it in other classes. I think probably the, the reason this was the case is because the alternative is much worse. <laughs> I think, but, but I know, I don't know. Alf? Yeah. Um, use of questionnaires in classrooms is not new. Yeah. So you are stressing that this is a game. What, what makes this a game rather than just Yes. The online question the so, so the question was, there are a lot of uh, student response systems out there. So why is this a game? Uh, there are, the most important thing is that there's a goal here for students to get points. That's really uh, one big change. Another thing is that uh, it's designed as a game with audio. All the other response systems are quiet. They look more like, uh, like an office tool, you could say. The interface is more playful, so the whole design, audio, and also the points is what, what makes it into a game. And I, one lecture, actually the audio um, just stopped working, and the students started to complain. No, this is not right. You cannot play without the audio. <laughs> Which I, I, I didn't think that would be the case, but it was such an important part of the experience. And I also noticed when they start to play the music, all the students get focused. <laughs> Uh, they can do, you know, whatever, surf, uh, or do Facebook, or whatever, but when the music starts, everyone actually starts to look at the large screen, which is really interesting. Um, is that, did I answer your question? Okay. Uh, was it fun to compete against others? For the first time we went, 95%. Through, through the whole semester, I think the competition part, yeah, it was less, 84%, still quite high. Uh, yeah. Um, I was engaged while playing. 96% the first time. Then everything was new and fresh. Through the whole semester, almost 90%. And I think this was a much higher number that I anticipated because I was thinking they were playing the same type of gameplay through the whole semester. Wouldn't start to get bored, but obviously I think they thought it was okay since the content was changing all the time. And it was related to what they were teaching. Question? Yeah. Um, did they get any sort of grade based off of this, or was it purely a game within the class? Of course, the whole grade was based on the game. Now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I made it explicitly that this is not related to the grading. Okay. Not at all. Uh, I know, I don't know how you do it at the university, but at, at um, 
At least our universities, the grades or this course is only grade on the project they deliver at the end and the final examination. We don't have any other uh, way of grading. So, and they also used their nickname, so it was not, they didn't have to show kind of their, uh, that this was, they were actually doing well or bad. We knew some of the best students we knew because they're kind of smiling a lot every time they, their name, even often not their name but the nickname, they're kind of waving and you know, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, it was fun to play Kahoot, 95% agreed, and 89% of the, they played every lecture, which is also a very high number. I was also surprised about that. And the crucial, yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, this game's like all engaging and uh, things, but uh, how is the retention, knowledge retention, like, because once you finish playing the game, you're like, yeah, yeah, I won, and then, yeah. how much does it help with their retention? The, the quest question was, how much does this um, game uh, actually, what is the effect of retention, how much do you remember? Uh, we don't have any explicit data about that, but, but we have carried out some um, textual questionnaires. And the students say that we remember the most the key uh, things from the lecture much better because they have more kind of hooks. Not only you have to set it, not only have it been on the slides, but also I remember, for instance, my this question I answered incorrectly. No, I know the right answer because I did. Usually they do a, you know. This was so stupid, and they remember this is the correct answer or incorrect answer. So they get more ways of remembering what is right and what is wrong. But we don't have the data, but this, that's something we're looking into right now. So really good question, thanks. I learned something, this is really important. This is what they said themselves if they thought they learned something. One time event, 73% meant they learned something. And actually a higher number of the students that used this through the whole semester, thought they learned something, which was interesting. Um, and the final question, how often should Kahoot be used in lectures? Uh, this was only asked to the, my students that use it through the whole semester. So 57% uh, so thought this should be used in every lecture. Um, and 37% once a week, and that's the majority. Basically 6% uh, once a month or never. So most of the students wanted to use this every week, which was a really strong number. Okay, um, then we can uh, maybe play, let's see. Yeah, Oops. I think we'll just play another quiz, which is, now it's uh, more, serious things you have to this is serious questions so now you have to sharpen yourself so let's see um, yeah this quiz is basically questions from lots of different areas uh, but I just want to show that you can ask questions in different ways you can make uh, a variation of questions let's see This is my daughter, she's making a documentary in high school about Kahoot, so. Okay. Yes, same drill. If you just open the web browser, kahoot.it, and now the game pin is 757. Five, seven, it's not letting us join. Seven, five, seven. What? Uh, it's it's not, it doesn't work? It's not letting us join. If you exit out and go back in, then it'll That's like it. refresh. Okay, we'll try. Maybe some caching problem here. Okay, let's see. The servers are running on Amazon. Sometimes, actually, they crash last my last demo uh, I had to run on a different uh, server let's see this whole cloud based oops
Okay. <coughs> Battery has died on the mic, so I'll just talk a bit louder. Is it? Can you hear me in the back? Almost? Okay. Back to the military. <laughs> All right. Why does it not take me? I say, join game, I don't get anywhere. Let's see. I can check it. Maybe <laughs> your name is taken? What if you oh, try? Well, that's what I ended in the first time. Okay. Or well, I can make another name. Okay. All right. Let's see. Strange. Uh, please. Hmm. <laughs> That's okay. Try to do it. Okay. Seven five seven. Right? Seven five seven. No, no, it's three three eight. What? No, no, sorry, sorry. 338. Oh, okay, then I. Oh, okay. <laughs> back. Three, three. Oh, three. I'm sorry. 338. Oh. Maybe that was the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> three three eight, right? Yeah, three three eight. Uh, you just enter your nickname. Oh, this is your nickname. Okay, just some user support. Yeah, yours like. Okay. Uh, Perfect. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Um, now we can play. <laughs> okay. Anyone else that wants to join that haven't been able yet? Okay. So, a lot of different questions, we'll see. 15 questions. What are the potential effects of using game-based learning in the classroom? Maybe a bit hard to see in the back. <laughs> so all of them were correct. Okay. So this the first question was kind of a question to give everyone some points. Okay. In which religion do you find the five pillars? So this is a question where you have three <coughs> alternatives or three answers. Why does it say waiting for the other players to answer? Yeah, because they're you have given your answer. I have. You have. Yeah. Okay. Most of you got it right. So during during my lecture, if I see that most of you got it wrong, then I explain what is the right one and why. The others are three, three incorrect. Cases. That's kind of a whole experience, okay? <laughs> ASDF, Andre, wow, it's your? It's not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Who is the author of the book shown in this illustration? Now, maybe it's hard for you to read, but it says Scrooge looking doubtfully at him. I can do it then. Scrooge asks the question. <laughs> so then you have to look at the picture to get kind of the right answer. Okay, Charles Dickens. Most of you got that right. 
the Mori show is in the lead. And the funny guy is second place or girl. How would you classify the number 213 divided by 163? So here the illustration should help you to give some ideas. It's both rational or real number. A lot of you got it incorrect. Irrational number? Come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next. Let's see. Oh. Yeah. It's hard to pronounce. <laughs> okay. Smoking men are 20 t 27 times more likely to get lung cancer than can the men that doesn't smoke. It's just true or false? This is a true or false question, basically. That was true. <laughs> okay, most of you got it right. So this is an example of a true false question. Okay, <laughs> same situation. It's pretty close in the, in the lead. Who was the composer of this piece of classical music? Now we have to listen. It's a YouTube. So you can also use video, uh, YouTube videos or music if you want to ask about that. Two. Okay. Still one person that has not given <laughs> her or his answer. Okay. This is Mozart. Mozart. Okay, most of you got that. Right? And shoes in the lead. Okay, next question. Which now, these we have a question. How come these have odd numbers when whenever I enter I get some like 3400, 4600? How come these have these broken numbers? You can get it. Yeah. It's the timing. So which of these countries are permanent members of the United Nations Security Council? All of them apart from India. Yeah. Most of you got it right. So you don't have to have just one correct answer. Okay, shoes still in the lead. What is the age of the twins and the younger boy? Then you have to look at it's a logical puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so we are twins, the product of our age is 72. Now you have more time and can hear the music, it's more relaxing. So you don't have to stress that much. questions where you maybe need some piece of paper to do some computations and stuff. So you don't need only to have short questions. One more player. The right answer should be six and two years old. Most of you got that one. That's good. Okay, shoes still in the lead. Next one. What is missing from the formula for the photosynthesis? <laughs> okay. Most of you get. Oh, actually, just. One incorrect answer. That's pretty good. <laughs> then we should celebrate. Okay. Shoes still in the lead. What is the name of this fish? 
then you use the illustration to. Next question, which country is shown here? Much better than the other university I tested the same quiz. <laughs> they didn't know this was France. Sorry, is there any way to change my answer? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not for this game mode. We, we we have other game modes where you can do that stuff. Shoes. Okay, which from which period is this painting? <laughs> This was a renaissance. Wow, most of you got that right. You can also, if you want to discuss things in the class, you can also kind of go back and look at the picture if you want. OK. Shoes still in the lead. Factor completely the following mathematical expression. It should be easy. No. This is like second grade or something. Yeah. Two more questions. Scrooge McDuck in the lead. Uh, what is printed to the screen when the following Python program is executed? <laughs> this is the kind of questions I use in my introductory programming uh, course class. Should be 40. Oh, okay. Python programming is probably not the best thing to ask about. Okay, the person that's hard to pronounce is in the lead. The final question, what is this man known for? Difficult question. Okay, so this is Tom Cruise. Most. <laughs> okay, let's see. The final scoreboard. So, this is the winner. This is the winner. And you get a free um, travel to Norway <laughs> and you pay for yourself. And, uh, yeah, okay, the final scoreboard. So you can see you know, who scored best. You can also download results. 
So if you download results, you get an Excel sheet with how the class answered, which you can use to improve um, your class. So also, some teachers use it. They uh, force the students to actually uh, 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 to put their na real names or a number. Then they can do uh, grading or whatever they would like to do. Uh, let's just wrap up my talk. I think I used my time. So what I found from using this uh, tool is that game-based learning it works quite well in engaging, motivating, and improving learning. I think the, ma the major factor is to make a variation, also to uh, add something else that you can remember, remember some stuff. It's not a way of teaching new things, but um, to improve the retention. Uh, and also we have found that if you use this a lot, it doesn't really impact the students in a negative way, the, the attitude towards um, learning through this way. Uh, we also found, in terms of improved learning, this is based on the, uh, some feedback from the students. Uh, they get more focused. When I say, in the end of my class, we are running Kahoot, then they pay more attention, because they know they have to use their knowledge uh, just within a couple minutes, and not like the end of the term. So they actually focus more on what I'm saying, which is really nice for a teacher. Uh, and also, I get an acknowledgement if they really understand what I'm teaching, and then I can explain things that they didn't get. And as a teacher, I find weak spots in my teaching. These are certain things that they, they, they don't get this, so I had to change the way I teach these parts on my uh, course. Uh, also, um, basically, my students have a much more positive <laughs> Uh, attitude against my lectures because of using this tool. Uh, I did a course evaluation, I didn't di do a course evaluation, but the department did a course evaluation, or they do it every year. And they, for my class, they did one at 2012 and one for 2013. The only difference I know I made was to use Kahoot in 2013. And uh, the students, the, the results from this um, uh, evaluation said that the students, um, the number of students that liked my course increased by 10%. It was pretty high at 2012 as well, but it improved quite a lot. And also less students thought it didn't, didn't like my course, which I find really nice as a teacher. And that was the only thing I changed. But I think that the major reason is it was more interactive and it broke up kind of the long teaching, like teaching um, all the slides and all the, the Blackboard uh, sessions. OK, no demo. I'm finished. OK. Uh, so that was what I wanted to say. And this environment is free and open. So if you want to use it for whatever purpose, a party or you know, doing study groups, uh, my students actually used it uh, uh, before the final examination, they used my quizzes and played them through uh, just to better remember the part of, of my course. Um, yes, you can just go to getcahoot.com get <coughs> and register, and then it's, you can just, just start using it. And uh, you, you can also nag your teachers. If you want to make the lectures more interesting, you can why don't try out this tool and see if it works for you. Yes, and you can send me an email if you have any questions. Can I ask if there's a question? Yeah. Any questions? Comments? <coughs> yes. Earlier you mentioned um, the hard part is to come up with the questions. So yeah. definitely it looks like you have to have a very clear answer to use the system uh, if the open ending won't work very well. So yeah. do you have any data like what kind of question you know is work better with the system? What kind is not that uh, well? Now my second question is, uh, do you have any data about <coughs> what pair of during the class it works better, like in the middle of the lecture or like at the beginning or like at the okay, end? Okay, yes, so the question, two questions. One was about what kind of question could you ask or what is kind of the best type of questions? Uh, and the second one was um, the about- The timing in the class. Yeah, timing, when to do the quizzes. So about the, as I do it when I prepare my lectures, I look at what are the most important parts that they really have to remember. 
and I pick those to make the questions. So that's my guidelines for finding the questions. We also plan to do open-ended uh, questions to add to Kahoot, but we haven't done that yet. So it's also possible to, yeah, later on we'll come with open-ended questions as, as well. But one limitation <coughs> is that you have to put the questions in this format. Not too long questions, and the answer should be not too long. And this is the way the game works, because the students should, be, should read through the alternatives. If you have long <coughs> sentences, it will be really hard. And so we kind of have to have short answers and also quite short questions. Um, but I think, in general, it's just to try to figure out what is the most important things that you have to learn and make questions based on that. I think to, make, to ask questions is maybe not that hard, but to find good answers is maybe even harder. Uh, about the second question about timing, um, I found that uh, for me it's good to maybe I, I do some a talk for 15, 20 minutes, then I need some kind of break, uh, or the students need some kind of break. Then you can do a paper exercise, or you can use Kahoot, a lot of stuff. But I have used it to, or I use it in the beginning of the class to know how much, for, for instance, in the beginning of course, to know how much the students know. And then I can trace how much they learn and to ask the same questions later on. But usually it's after 20 minutes, then I need a break, and then I usually run code, or at the end of the class, or at the end of summarizing a topic that you have been through. Yes? Okay. All right, I think uh, other questions uh, Alf can take when we go down to uh -huh. our social hour yeah. downstairs. Everybody is invited, and I'd like to thank Alf. Thanks. One thing, uh, if a if couple of you could just um, uh, answer some questions to my uh, daughter about how the experiences was to play Kahoot, that would be nice for her documentary, if that's possible. Maybe the winner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks.